there, and this is not happening in life. Okay. All right, we're live. Go. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for having me. I mean, it's an honor. Um, you know, we've worked together for many years, and uh, you've been really instrumental, Stacy, in our growth, and um, both professional and um, personally. So we appreciate it. So you know, it's. Um, I mean, I think we're doing pretty good, but I figured, you know what? Let's let's just pay it forward and give other people the opportunity to see that it's very possible. So let me just. I'm not used to this. Let me just figure this out. So. I have to share my screen, right? Sorry, I muted myself. Yes. Hold on. Oh, boy. I'm hanging out in this podcast studio in my office, so this is, is different. There, I made you co-host in case it wouldn't let you share your screen. So see if you can now. Just bear with me. Let me just change this here. Sorry about the technical difficulty. Wow. Um, right, let me just do something different here because this is not working. Where's my screen? While you're pulling it up, Jonathan. Sorry about that, Stacy. It's okay. That's all right. No worries. Um, while you're pulling it up, we do have one question. So we'll start with this question, but um, is a podcast room a good place to record a YouTube channel or do you um, prefer to share my screen a different way? Oh, it's not sharing. Can you hear me, Jonathan? All right, so while Jonathan gets it pulled up here, can you hear me, Jonathan? What about now? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, so we just, I, I just had to remove all these things because for some reason it's, it's not working. So we're just going to have to do it this way. Okay. Here, why don't you take it real quick, Stacey? Let me figure this out. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's been troubleshooting moment for us to be able. Okay, so while while um, Jonathan's getting everything loaded here for us, let me just, I'm gonna unspotlight him for a second. And I'll re-spotlight me. Okay, so while we're talking about this, um, this, is, this is like a good um, concept for all of us as well. So as you know, every week we bring something to the production mastermind for you guys to either learn or implement or do. And so I want to talk about this, um, concept of sort of the 30, 60, 90. And if you've been around us for a long time, you've probably heard this before. Um, in a lot of planning, we plan our year right? We plan, like, I want to sell this many houses. I want to do this many things. And we reverse engineer that plan, right? And we break it down, hopefully, into quarters, right? Well, as we have these calls every week, there's like new and exciting stuff that comes up. And it's like, how do I implement these things when I sort of already had a plan kind of trucking, you know, one way should I redo my plan? Can I just like add this into it? And then we sort of get overwhelmed and we don't get a lot. Implemented. So my, I get this question a lot. So the, this is the reason why I'm bringing it up and I struggle with it as well, right? What to implement at what time. So if you've created your year plan and your year plan is actually helping your, excuse me, 
once you hit your year plan, then you break it into quarters. If your quarters are truly aligned with that year plan, and you've talked about your vision to your team, even if your team is one admin, maybe your team is just your photographer or sign guy, you have a team. It doesn't matter how many people are on it. You have a team. Even if you think you're a single agent, somebody else helps you, right? There's a team involved. So when you break it down into quarters, those quarters should be solid with projects meaning we don't let anything else kind of seep into that plan, that quarter's plan. So for instance, today, Jonathan will show you all about YouTube and you'll be excited about that. And you're like, okay, tomorrow I start YouTube and he's going to show you how he does it. What I would encourage you to do is to always keep a list. So I always call this list action item. I don't know why I called it that. It's not like an official title, but I would write down any ideas that were brought up or came up and then the date in which I saw them or heard them. So I know where I can reference back to get the information. Then next quarter, when I'm ready to start a new set of projects, maybe that one will make it in. Otherwise, sometimes we just get totally off track and then we never fully get to implement anything, right? And especially as realtors, we have so many things that come uh, at us and we're generally big visionary idea people. So it's not that we're lacking in ideas, it's that sometimes we're lacking in the discipline of implementation. And so when you think about the things that really move your business forward, you want to think of them in two ways. The first way is, is it going to move my critical number forward? Your critical number is generally something around transactions. So you, you may have said in the beginning of the year, okay, last year I sold 50 houses. This year I want to sell 80. Okay. Or maybe you're like, last year I sold 80, and honestly, I'd be happy with 60 this year because the market's shifted, right? So that's your critical number. It's a number that involves something specific that does grow revenue, but it's not your revenue number. Your second number to know if a project fits your plan is, does it increase my revenue? So that is, I always like to use my more like my net profit, even though it's called revenue, my net profit, what am I going to make after I pay everything? Because it helps keep me accountable to what I'm buying, what I'm paying for, what courses I'm doing. Um, it also helps me with implementation because now I have to hold my dollars and myself accountable. If I am paying my brokerage a certain amount, my agents a certain amount. I'm looking at that in terms of what is it ultimately going to net me. So even though the projects that we pick may not generally seem like a critical number or a revenue number, that's sort of the car wash it has to be run through to see if it is a great project for me at this time in my business. If not, it might stay on my action item list just a little bit longer, and that's okay. I'll give you a really good example of this. So um, there was a time a few years ago when Real Estate Fee School, um, which for those of you that aren't familiar, is a coaching and training company, and we, I work for Real Estate Fee School. I'm an agent as well. Um, we were looking at a new website because it was just kind of clunky, and it wasn't very aesthetically nice, and it it felt like people were getting lost in the shuffle and we couldn't get the sales we wanted because the website was kind of stinky. So every time we would go for our annual plan and our quarterly plan for three years, it stayed on the list of should we get a new website? Now, some people felt really like they felt really definite, like, yes, the website would solve our sales problems. Others would be like, yes, a website would help us be more attractive for people looking for coaching because they will see us, our results will show better, this button will work, this will be right. Like, yes, we need it. 
And you could convince yourself that a website would equal whatever, sales, you know. But then when you get down to it and you look at what really makes a difference for your critical number and your ultimate revenue, is it truly a website? Like, is that the highest and best use of your time, your team's time? Because sometimes we think, hey, website, that'll be so easy. We'll get that done like two months. No, it's like a year project when you're really going to do it right because all your systems have to be aligned around that website. Okay, this changed. So now the sales process changes. So I love that example because it taught me so much during that time. Because I was like, okay, this is the quarter. We're getting the website, right? That's going to change it. That's going to that's gonna allow us to hit our goals. And then when we really put it through that filter, we realized that it didn't. And then finally, three years later, the website made the list, right? After we had fixed some things that were much more important. So as you're kind of learning... Um, as we all are all the time, we're learning what are the right projects, what are the right things to put my time into, what are the things I should be doing, and maybe you're like, yeah, I would love to have a coach that just tells me what to do, but here's the thing, you still as business owners have to learn how to run this through a filter, pretend you're your own board of directors, and if you had to go sit in front of your board of directors, and you were, and and you gave them your year plan and you guys meet quarterly and, and you give them your projects every quarter. And then all of a sudden there was a meeting in the middle of the quarter and you're like, I heard this thing yesterday. I'm like going full force. They would be like, hmm, that doesn't seem like what a business owner would do. That seems like someone that has a job and we're creating businesses. And so when you're looking at all of your plans, just use those filters to see if it helps you kind of determine what a squirrel is and what is an actual project that's going to move you forward. And then keep your list, just, or give your list to your admin. If you're like a person like me, who I'm like, you know what, we could do one thing and like, it's be fine. Everybody will be on board. And then your team's like, oh my gosh, we switched directions again. Or honestly, your own brain might tell you that. It's like, I can't trust you. You think this one day in the next year. So it's just, as we're going to start again, planning now, we're going to start planning for 2024, right? We're starting to make those mental notes. What am I going to do different next year? What processes need to be in place? What positions do I need to hire for? What systems need to happen? What marketing needs to happen? Um, what metrics do I need to have so that I can make sure that everything I'm doing actually gives me the results I'm looking for? And results can be measured a myriad of ways, right? Do I have the right meetings in place? Does my team understand my vision? All of those things, that's going to go into your business planning. And so again, by using the two questions will help you filter some of that out. What's my critical number? And then secondly, how does, like, what's my actual revenue? Or again, to me, the profit that's coming to me, what is that number? And do these things, move it forward. So, all right, let I'm me ready. run the chat here and then I'm bringing Jonathan back. One I'm second, Jonathan. And we are, because I know they're like, yes, we want the new team. Um, okay, Becky said, this is a great point. Shiny object people like me. Oh, I know, me too. Everybody. Me too. Jessica said, I have these three questions on my whiteboard in front of me. Is this going to help me earn or receive income? Is this relevant to what I'm trying to accomplish? And does this support the life I'm going to create? That is awesome, Jessica. Thank you for sharing those. Um, oh, and Joe says, I use is the juice, <laughs> is the juice worse? Worth the squeeze. I almost can't say that. Is the juice worth the squeeze? I love it. Um, share your project list with an accountability buddy if you don't have an admin or coach. I'm available to be a board of directors member for anyone here. That is awesome. That is so true. Share it with the person that's helping you achieve your goals, an accountability partner or whatever. So, all right. 
we will get going now with the guest of Jonathan. We're good now. All right, you take it over. I'm going to unspotlight myself. Cool. Yeah, I got Go a new ahead. computer, so it, I just needed to mess around with the settings. So we're good now. Go ahead. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. So quickly, um, how did I get into YouTube? I'll try to make this quick since we have like 30 minutes. Um, last year I was on a Rebs, um, I think it was a fall summit. And you had somebody on that was talking about YouTube and I was kind of blown away um, in regards to the results and what he was able to achieve. And then EXP con came and everything they were talking about, at least to me was about video. So I, I decided when we returned to Florida, that we would focus on YouTube. So I told my team, this is all we're going to focus on. And um, so we, you know, put a plan together, started putting together some topics, the, the what the business plan was going to look like, and we started to execute. So our channel is called Live South Florida, because we're in South Florida. Who am I? Um, so I've been in real estate for 10 years now. I am a, a father of two beautiful girls. I have a beautiful wife. I have a real estate team. Um, we've built it. We've knocked it down. We built it. I've gone solo. I've pretty much tried everything at this point. And um, we, let me see if I can. What we've been able to achieve in the last 10 years as of right now closed is 837 units. Uh, transactions, 232 million in volume and 5.6 million in GCI. So that's where we stand today in the last 10 years. Why YouTube? Because we were looking for, um, we were looking for another lead gen source and we know that video has become more and more popular the last several years and it's only gonna become more popular. So we decided let's just jump in it's never too late. Let's go in. Let's see what this is all about. Um, and then that the class last year and all of the speakers at EXPCon was confirmation that we needed to do this. So we decided to jump in. And so we started our channel January 4th this year. So this is our results so far. Uh, as of yesterday, we're at 5,429 subscribers. I think we're, we're up another 10 today. Uh, we've gotten 68 leads since January, which is turned into 10 close, one pending, 6.1 million in close and pending. We actually have one for 1.5 million right now that's uh, set to close and 166,700 in GCI. So when we started this journey, I didn't expect anything. I decided like, even if we don't get anything in the next 18 months, we know this works. We're just going to get down on this path and we're going to commit to the process and we're not going to be tied to the results, but I got to say that I'm kind of blown away um, what we've been able to, to achieve in nine months uh, definitely ex far exceeded what we expected. I would have been happy with one closing and I, it didn't even matter about subscribers. So that's our results so far. Uh, and things are starting to pick up even more. They're starting to compound. We have a lot of buyers that we're working with. Um, that are in the pipeline. So these numbers should really dramatically go up in the next six to 10 months. Um, so last year, when we were looking at our business, we broke down like, okay, well, where's our business coming from? So sphere of influence, past clients, referrals was 48%. Agent referrals from around the country, 22%. Uh, Google LSA, if you're not on there, you definitely got to get on there. Google LSA, 16%. Referral sites like Ideal Agent, um, Upnest, uh, like Fast Expert, Effective Agents, those kind of sites, 14%, but we were missing another strong lead source. So that's where we started to implement YouTube. And so far, so far, YouTube has accounted for 21.5%. So it's, it's one of our top and best lead sources. Um, 
it's just pretty incredible what YouTube has done and the type of leads that you get are really high quality. You know, it's passive. Um, that's the other thing. We wanted something that would be able to work for us 24 seven, which YouTube has. So I was, you know, the reason why we decided to make a change is because I was there, we were looking for another lead source, but I was also tired. I was just, you know, doing this for 10 years. I'm like, okay, we, something's got to give tired of calling expireds and for sale by owners. I was tired of paying thousands of dollars monthly on pay-per-click and Facebook leads. Um, I was tired of chasing people for business, um, trying to tell them why they needed to work with us. I was tired of giving away almost half of our commission, especially to those referral sites. Um, tired of just going on these appointments and competing with multiple, multiple agents, even though we still do that today on the listing side. And um, <clears throat> just tired of feeling small and not appreciated by a lot of people. Um, they were just, you know, it's, I'm sure you, you know, when you're working with a lot of people that are not sphere that you don't know, they don't appreciate you or, or what you've been able to accomplish or the service that you're willing to ready to give them. So <clears throat> we decided to, you know, to make a change. Some of the benefits of YouTube, you reach more people vi via video than anything else. I mean, there's hands down, no comparison, the time compounds and and it works for me 24 seven. So while I'm sleeping, while I'm on vacation, while I'm at my, you know, uh, dropping my kids off at school, this is always working for me. It's, it's incredible. Um, <clears throat> me and my audience build a parasocial relationship, which is really cool. They get to know me, even though I don't know who they are. They watch my videos. Many times when I speak to them, they're like, oh, I've already, you know, they know about me. They, they've Googled me. They find me on social media. But it's just cool that people are coming to me that know who I am and I don't have to sell myself. Doesn't cost me anything. Um, just that upfront time, you know, for a lifetime of views and you find and talk to your ideal avatar. What I found that I didn't expect is the people like you find you. So a lot of the leads that we're working with or the people that I've spoken with, even if they didn't turn into business for whatever reason, they're they've all been really nice people for the most part um people that i would want to talk to and help so that was really a surprise for for us so what i was talking about in terms of like getting views so this just in the last uh nine months we're 490,737 views which is just crazy to think that almost 500,000 people have seen our videos um there's no way that i'd be able to reach that many people by calling you know what i was doing before was calling and you know pounding the phones three hours a day it's just the the amount of people you can reach on youtube is there's nothing like it and even like the last 48 hours we have you know 900 people that have watched our video of top eight reasons not to move to florida um you know people in terms of living in Boca Raton explained in 10 minutes West Palm Beach so it's just really cool to see the analytics and see that you know people are watching these videos they're receptive they're thankful um many times they thank us for putting together this content so it's it's really been life-changing I would say one of the best things about YouTube is people come to you as the authority so instead of you constantly having to um convince people why they need to work with you when they come to us, it's, it's a done deal. It's they've, they see my personality. They see that I'm knowledgeable. They, they like what we have to offer. And it's just a matter of finding them what they're looking for at that point, which is a really cool experience. Here's some of, some of like the messages. So, I mean, hi, Jonathan, I viewed your video, of the six best communities in Boca Raton. I'm preparing to relocate to the U S Florida, very impressed by Boca. This person, do you have rental property listings in Old Flores? You can that ended up turning into a into a purchase. Um, this person here from New, New Jersey, uh, I plan on relocating to Broward County in about one year. I am interested in purchasing a home in either Coral Springs, Parkland, Deerfield Beach, Pompano Beach. Book uh, five hundred to nine hundred thousand price range. I can afford something in the one point two million range. So it's just really cool to see. Like uh, Joanne, appreciate your YouTube videos about the real or about the area and the state. Um, you know, there's, I mean, there's, I have so many. So these are just a few just to show you. And this is follow up boss, by the way. 
Uh, Alexander, good morning. I saw your video on looking for a home in Boca Raton. Please give me a call. Um, Adam, ha hello, Jonathan. My name is Adam. I recently came across one of your YouTube videos about Boca Raton. I actually want to talk to you in person. So that turned out to be a really good relationship. Uh, Alesha, hello, Jonathan. I saw your YouTube channel on first time home buyer program, Hometown Heroes. So, I mean, there, we just have so many success stories. And um, it's I, I'm just really humbled that we took the leap. We decided to commit to go all in and we're seeing the results, which has been really, really cool. Um, our goal with, with YouTube is to have enough leads to pass around to our agents consistently, much higher quality leads with higher conversion percentage, which it's one of the highest quality leads in my opinion. Um, attract agents who are great servicers and will service our YouTube leads. Very important, at least in our marketplace, there's a lot of great services, there's not great prospectors. So that's kind of the route that we're going in. Um, be much better retention in a more sustainable business and a substantial increase in revenue to the team and to the agent. So it's, it's a win-win for everybody. Our content strategy is made up of four tiers. So you have state, city, neighborhood, and market. So we, when we're creating our content, we base it on one of those four tiers, state, city, neighborhood, market. So like a state, for example, this, these are like what we call macro. It's more like statewide, not so micro so like don't move to florida it's actually it's crazy it's our biggest video it's three hundred ninety eight thousand views so we'll be at 400 probably by tomorrow that was eight months ago uh why are people moving to florida top eight reasons that's ten thousand views so you know we like to kind of think of macro down to micro so state on the bigger level which has gotten a lot of subscribers um but then as we go into the city into the neighborhood that actually is what converts the most amount of business for us city like these are our, what we call our 10 minute guides so we actually time it just because you know just to switch it up so we do these guides like living in Boca Raton explained in 10 minutes so we actually and I tell Alexa to set the timer for 10 minutes and we go through as much as we can and give you a good snapshot of the city um, so we have like Boca Raton we have West Palm Beach Delray Beach Fort Lauderdale we have a lot of cities so that's our city guides Neighborhood, these are actual neighborhoods where we're driving through with a GoPro, talking about the community, um, just giving, you know, the consumer, the viewer information, uh, boots on the ground so they understand what's going on. So it's not, you know, we're giving them a history of the neighborhood, of what's going on, price point, you know, all the information that they need. Um, and then we finish it off with, with a driving tour so they can, you know, it's like they're in the car with us. So that's been really cool. Market. Um, flood insurance, you know, it's been, a, it's been definitely homeowners insurance and flood insurance have been an issue here in Florida. So we, we made a video about it. And then the first time home buyers, we did, even though they ran out of money, um, but we had, I think five or six people call us off that video. And so we're working with a few new buyers from that video. Why has it worked so well? Well, because people are moving to Florida, at least for our market. Um, I know that I think it was Levi that was talking about Texas. It worked well for him. So I guess it just depends on the state. But for us, it just made sense because we have so many people moving here. Um, as a matter of fact, Florida, from what I saw in 2022, was number one with 319,000 new residents, which is a lot of people moving here every day. So it's it's been really a really good match. Um, how have we done so well? It's the content. Um, it's, it's really important to put out good content. I've, I studied a lot of content creators, real estate agents in all marketplaces to get an idea of like what we needed to bring to the table. Um, we wanted to do something that was well-researched that would give people better information than just like your generic stuff. So, you know, we went into the history and um, just like this really micro. So the content we, and we keep it, we try to keep it fresh. So the content's extremely important. Um, you know, we were able to show our knowledge and uh, of the marketplace and, and all of that within that content. The production quality, I can't tell you how many times I've had people tell me, oh, I liked your videos because of your production. It's just professional. It's a nice backdrop. Um, you know, it, it's, it's important. So, and then the SEO, search engine optimization, how you get found on YouTube, very important. And then the trust and confidence that we've been able to, to, to achieve with 
because of those four other reasons, um, it's just made it a, a really great relationship with us and people that are coming to us to, to help them make their move. So when I say SEO, for example, this is a uh, living in Boca Raton explained in 10 minutes, the video tag. So you could see here, living in Boca Raton, rank number two, living in Boca Raton, Florida, rank number two, Boca Raton, rank number five, Boca Raton, Florida, rank number one. So it's very important to make sure that when you're putting videos together, you're doing the right video tags, you're, you're doing the right title, the right uh, description, all of that has to flow together. Very important. That's how you get seen. I think this video has got like 17,000 views. The timeline of making a video, come up with a topic. Um, so we sit down as a team and we think like, okay, well, what are what do we want to talk about? What's important? Um, unfortunately, I still have to sell real estate. If it wasn't for that, I'd be probably putting out two, three, four videos a week. So right now we've been averaging one a week. Um, so we have like a whole queue of topics, reach, research information. Uh, on the topic, we put together a script or a list with bullet points, have equipment. Really, all you need to begin is just a phone, a smartphone with, you know, that can shoot 4K or just high res. And then learn to edit or just leverage it out. What I did initially is I learned Final Cut Pro and I taught myself how to edit, got to the point where the, the moment we close our first deal, I basically broke that out into, okay, I have this much to pay an editor. And then we leveraged it out and it's, it's been a game changer, but you know, these are things that I didn't know. I had to learn all of this just um, to get this up and running and it's anybody can do it. It's, it's not hard. Um, the information's there. Let's see. Our process. So we use Trello, love Trello. I actually got Trello from Stacy back in the day. Um, Video, so Trello is where we house our video ideas. We, we, all of the topics and video ideas, we put them there. We create the cards with the video ideas. Um, we have stages, so we move them from left to right, and all of the links and everything, um, for the scripts, for the B roll, for the images, for videos, for GoPro, for drone, for all of that stuff. We have the links, um, from Trello, but it's actually stored in Drive and also in Dropbox. So we create maps. The thumbnails, all of that media is is uh, put in Dropbox because we share that with with the editor. So that's that's kind of like the central location. Frame.io is what we use to revise the video. So they'll send me um, like a rough video with you know with their what what they've been able to accomplish, and then I can go in and I can um, comment on what I think or what needs to be changed, or and it's all time stamped. So it's it's really neat. And then we upload it to YouTube. We do the SEO and we make it go live. And that's pretty much our process. Uh, this is this is like our Trello board, for example. So you could see on the left-hand side, it's topics. And then it's in queue for future release. And then number two is where we, re we need to write scripts. Um, number three, record the videos. Four is when we have it all together. Five is uh, when it's with with the editing team then review is when we're actually it's in a revision process upload the video and then the final one i don't know if you can see it because i think this thing is in the way is when it's launched so that's how we stay organized because there's a lot of moving pieces um so you know we treat it like anything else we were very serious and we made a plan and it's worked out really well for us and i think actually this presentation went faster than i thought And then that's it. Perfect. Well, we've got lots of questions for you. So very good job. Thank you for kind of taking us through the process. Um, I'm going to ask you these questions here. Some of them you may have sort of answered as it went along a little bit, but just in case I'm going to ask them. Go for it. Um, what cadence do you have to posting your videos? So is it once a week, three times a week? What is it? So it's once it's a once a week. Um, we've, it, yeah. So it's once a week. We tried to do two a week, and life happened, and just the influx of business coming in from YouTube and just from other areas, kind of prevented us from 
having the time to commit to doing two a week. So we kind of scaled it back and said, let's, let's do one, let's batch, create a bunch of videos in advance and have enough in the queue to that's already done to where we can confidently start to do two a week without feeling like we're suffocating. But it's, it's once a week right now. And we're aiming for Wednesday. Sometimes it changes, but uh, Wednesday's the goal. And then while we're on that, because I know this question is probably coming if it hasn't yet, um, you want to quick talk about your batching? Yeah, so batching is, uh, so when I first started, I was literally making one video a week. And it was pretty stressful because other, you know, have kids and a business and you know, some people, they don't have to service clients anymore. They're more just uh, can just be a full-time content creator. Unfortunately, I can't yet. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we were doing one a week and then batching really is where you're creating these videos in advance. So you have them all done, revised, uh, even uploaded. And then, you know, you could say, okay, going into this next month, we have 10, 15, 20 videos. Perfect. Oops, sorry. I ended up sharing my screen. Okay. Me too. Very good. Um, okay. How do you get people to watch your videos? Like, where are you promoting it? So a lot of it, based on the analytics, a lot of it is um, is organic from YouTube because of the SEO. So it's very important. So you get found and then they start to, you know, put your videos on the main page where you get all those impressions. And then they base it on a bunch of things, click through rate and also watch time. Very important. So the longer people stay on your videos, the uh, the more that YouTube is going to recommend your videos to other people because they want you to stay on their website. And I, I mean, I do the social media stuff, but for some reason, Facebook, anytime I post like a YouTube link or video, it doesn't get any hits because I think Facebook knows you're trying to you're trying to drive people to a different site. But we do, you know, Instagram, we do uh, Twitter, we do LinkedIn, but for the most part, it's all organic via YouTube. Okay, perfect. And so when you started off, were there certain videos you knew exactly, like, this is the verbiage I'm going to use, or this is the script I'm going to use, like, give us kind of an idea of your first couple videos when you got started. So my first video, I mean, my first video, so we started off with more general, like Florida. Like, let's start off like more like bigger scale. Um, it just happened to be my second video that I ever made. What was what we call a banger. It was, f it was almost 400,000 views, which is incredible. Um, but it was really with the idea of let's, let's try to start off more general and then slowly work our way more into our market. And, um, and then kind of just have like a combination of all of these. So you're keeping, you know, you're mixing it up. Great. And then in the beginning, I know you edited your own videos. I like did. You were yeah. the one man show besides Lily um, is his wife, who is super talented in a bazillion things, but helped write sort of what you would talk about and things on your videos. But how much time were you blocking to like make a video as well as edit those videos? Great question. So we uh, starting the year, I told my team Fridays are content days. So that's all I'm doing, whether it's um, recording, whether it's capturing B-roll, which is like footage, like driving around neighborhoods. Um, it's just strictly for, for content. And they, they were like, okay, so it was the, you know, really Fridays, but then with the editing, I couldn't get it all done. And so at nighttime, sometimes on the weekends, when I had some free time, um, that's kind of how I did it. Um, any suggestions if someone has a channel right now that's a total different, um, you know, ideal customer, right? So for instance, hers is a fashion channel. Should she just try to switch it or start a new one? Start a new one. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the algorithm, um, even on real estate, we have to be very careful of what we do because if, if it's, if YouTube senses, it's not you, uh, real estate related then we can lose our positioning. Um, so I would say your channel should be strictly for one thing. And if you're going to do something different, which I will, I'm going to create other, you know, other things, um, it's going to be different channels, but people want to come, they want to be able to, it needs to be predictable. 
where they come in, they subscribe, they know they're going to get the same type of content um, week in and week out. It's not, you're not going to hit them with something completely different. Perfect. Um, okay, I got to, we got to motor through these questions. They're coming in like crazy. Um, do you connect follow up bots to your website, then to YouTube to filter in the leads that you need to follow up with? Yeah. So what we do is um, we, we tell people they could text us or, or send us a message. A lot of times they either text me or they go onto our website and they um, sign up and then we get that information through follow up boss and we just continue the conversation through there and have it all logged in the timeline. Um, do you spend much time on tagging and descriptions or is it mostly title and video that drive your views? I think it's everything. I mean, title is super important. Thumbnails are important too. So, and you'll see, like, if you go into our channel, it's we're we're keeping the same consistency in terms of our brand. Even the presentation that that I just did, the colors, the vibe, the whole thing has to all go together. Yeah, and I would recommend you all follow him on YouTube because you'll see his process. You'll see the thumbnails. You'll see the description. You'll see what it looks like. You'll understand how he's sort of creating these videos. Definitely make sure you follow him on all socials and YouTube. Um, so right now, what does your editing team look like? And you can kind of give us an, a cost-ish? So I started off doing it myself. And then I had a virtual assistant that I was working with. But that was kind of painful because he wasn't, he wasn't really like, I mean, he knew how to use video editing software. But there was a lot of back and forth. So I ended up finding somebody that um, local, he's a videographer, but he his editing team is based out of Europe and other countries. So um, we run through, he's him. it's him and a couple of people that do the editing. And I was able to work out a deal for $500 a video, just to be transparent. Yes, I love it. Um, do you do- because because, because when I was starting to look, I realized, wow, like for a good editor, they can easily charge $50 at the minimum to $200 an hour. So for me, $500, especially because of the business, I didn't spend any money until I made money off of YouTube. So I took checks, my first one, two, three checks. And I said, this is just specifically geared towards YouTube and the editing. So I can remove myself from that. And now I have that money there that I wouldn't have had if it weren't for YouTube. And I don't, I get 80 of 50, 60, 70, 80 hours of my life back a month. Cause it's a yeah, lot. Leverage, definitely. Um, what software are you using to edit? Final Cut Pro. Okay, perfect. Which comes with um, a Mac. Mac. Well, no, I'm sorry. It's iMovie, but Final Cut Pro is, a, is an Apple product. Yeah. Or I mean, you can use Premiere Pro too. Um. How did you learn about optimizing SEO? Books, videos, YouTube videos, what did you do? Yeah, uh, I you know did a deep dive, did a lot of research, um, watched a lot of videos about YouTube optimization, read a book about YouTube. I wanna say, I forgot what it's called, um, but it's, it's written by- um, uh, Written by Daryl The guy Eves. from Think Media. The guy from oh, Think Media, Sean, Sean Cannell. Cannell. Sean Cannell. Yeah, that's a really good book. YouTube Secrets. Yeah, YouTube that. Secrets. That a red cover. It's him and Benji Travis, really good book. So I just became a student of the game. I said, if I'm, you know, anything that I do, I, I'm pretty obsessive about, I go all in. So I was like, I'm going to really figure this out. And so far it's been um, good. How do you get details on a neighborhood? Like, is it just uh, top of the knowledge that you have or what do you use? Well, I mean, I Google the neighborhood and then I look for, you know, I go through, I comb through all the articles to try to find out the history of the neighborhood, who it was built by, you know, I go on the MLS, I look for like the, the years, you know, of the year built. Um, I try to find documents in the document section about like their bylaws or just like little things just to know the in and outs. So when I'm talking to somebody, I'm not just saying, oh, here's this. It's like, hey, let me educate you on the neighborhood and let me show it to you as well. Perfect. For example, when you're doing like the 10 minute tour through, you know, whatever city, sure. um, like how long does it take you to make a video? Like When I was editing it? 
You mean like well, from start to finish? Yeah. So is like it from writing the script. Like... No, it's a 10 minute video, but I would say for every minute of from every minute, for every one minute of of edited video, it was about an hour. Got it. Very good. Um, thoughts on like you use South Florida versus picking just one city as your channel name. So like Dallas, Texas, or you know. So whatever. we're in a so for us, like Dallas, Texas is a big city and there's a lot that compasses, right? For us, there's a lot of like little cities. So mm -hmm. I didn't want to minimize our reach and our and our uh, you know our presence by just saying like Boca Raton, which has less than a hundred thousand residents i figured let me just do all of south florida you know we we cover a, a bigger area yeah. yeah okay perfect i didn't so, i didn't want to create a channel to be too small and then i had to then rename it and all that so i figured that's the direction we're going to go in so we might as well name it that and build towards that and i think too you have to look at what do people call your area so if you're south people, florida yeah right so then if you just put Boca, they might not even, oh, is that in South Florida? Like, I mean, I wouldn't have known. I know it because you tell me. Yeah. So, okay. Um, is a podcast room great place to record a YouTube? Um, you guys will see this on his channel, but you record your YouTubes mostly. In my out. office. Yeah. Oh, well, or so. Office, but also so on my Sunday. studio is my home office um where i do like the 10 minute guides and all that but anything about like neighborhood tours i'm actually doing it in the neighborhood while i'm like walking around in the neighborhood and um any, this any podcast specific? studio is is at my office it's uh this is different yeah, his office is so nice is your um is there any specific equipment that you think people need or is it just like use your iphone go out and do it have a nice mic Anything you think is like super important when you're starting? Well, the good thing is with, with, if you have like an Android or, or an iPhone, I mean, it shoots in high res, like 4k. So your image is great. Um, audio is extremely important. So we have, I use something called a, a Rode wireless go, which is uh, it's like a transmitter. And then I just plug it into like a lavalier mic, which is like the one that you put like right here. And it has a wire and I put the, the transmitter in my pocket. So that way I can, I can be away from it. I can walk around. It's, I think it cost me like $300 for, but that's what we use for our, for our audio. Perfect. Um, how important is editing? Is Very it important, important to focus on that first. I think it's just getting the videos out though, isn't it? I like, think it's just getting the, I think it's just getting stuff out there period, but you definitely want to work towards improving your quality every video i can't tell you how many times people are i guess so one of the limiting beliefs i had when i first started was does this really work so what i did is i did a deep dive in terms of the competition that i have and i looked at their numbers on on mls and i'm like wow i'm doing way more business than them are is it work like so now i, I was like I, is this just like a, a like is this real is this is it not my market why are these people that are doing youtube not really doing that much business and then when I started talking to people, I, I would always ask them, oh, how did you find us? You know, what did you think about the videos? And a lot of times they were like, it's because of your production, you just have your stuff put together more. So we figured your business is the same way. So they felt like it's a direct reflection, which to me, I was like, wow, I didn't even think about that. Wow, that's interesting. Hmm. Do you believe there's an ideal time limit on videos? You've got like 10 minute ones, but like for YouTube, do you think, or for what you're building, just like everybody else wants to build, is there an ideal time limit? I would say, um, I mean, our videos are, the shortest is probably 10 minutes and it goes up to like 30 minutes. You gotta remember when people are going to YouTube, it's not like TikTok or Instagram, they're looking for information and they wanna go deep. So you wanna give them that and you wanna give them that, that stuff that they're looking for. So it's okay to have longer videos. But I would say sweet spot about 15, 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, perfect. Okay, we got one minute left, three questions. So if I started a YouTube channel in August that gets absolutely no views and has so much different information, should I delete and start over? It's better to, yeah. Okay. If I have a channel, it's been stagnant, 
if I want to rename the channel to living in whatever, should I start a new channel, rename the old channel with older videos? I would actually, depending on how many, like how built up it is, if, if it's not really that built up, I would start over and just upload those videos again and have like a fresh start and then just be consistent because they the algorithm rewards you too based on your consistency. Okay, perfect. Um, how do you balance working real estate and YouTube? I think you answered that. You said I batched and I had to block it and I had to do it in my little snippets of time. Um, let's see, any tips for how a new YouTuber can compete with established channels? You just have to provide good information. Um, one of the things that I do, if you, if you're looking for topics, go and search your area and find videos that are getting a lot of views, but, but the creator doesn't have a lot of subscribers. So if sure. let's say you see a video that's got so for example, the one that we have 400,000 views, that one I saw was popular for other creators, but they didn't have, they had like 200 subscribers. I'm like, wow, they're doing numbers for this. So I did it and it worked. So go in, look for topics that are already working that people are watching and where the, the, um, the creator doesn't have that many subscribers. It'll pop. Um, Richie had his hand up. Here's his question, unless it's different, but who writes the scripts? Do you memorize them um, or read them off? So luckily I have my wife that writes the scripts because if I had to write the scripts too, I mean, I don't know how I would do that. Um, we do both. So sometimes, so I've actually used a teleprompter in the past. I'll do it sometimes. Other times I'll just use a, the, um, the, like a bullet point. So Depends, you know, the, th the good thing with the teleprompter, if, if is you have the information, you just need to be able to be natural on camera, but it, it definitely saves a lot of time because when you're doing bullet points or things like that, it, it, it could, you know, it's going to take a lot more takes. Um, so it just depends. You want to write like a very established script. You want to spend the time writing the script, less time, you know, saying it or less time writing the script and more time saying it, but either way works. Uh, I'm a, I'm a big proponent on teleprompters actually. Yeah. I love them. They're like key. Okay. Last quick question. Um, yep. You can buy a teleprompter or get a teleprompter app either way. Mm -hmm. Um, with your videos, are you trying to get sellers or buyers or both? Great question. So that was one of the things I was a little concerned about. Cause I'm like, man, there's, these are just a lot of buyers, but for building a team and, uh, building a community, it's great. So for many years, I was strictly a listing agent. And I was working only with sellers and my buyer's agents were working with the buyers. Well, what happened was when our team fell apart for, or, you know, we, we um, decided to, they weren't meeting the standards of the team. They built the relationships with a lot of these buyers who then are the ones that are going to live in the homes. They're going to uh, refer, they're going to, you know, it's, I was selling these homes of people leaving the area because for whatever reason, people are getting divorced. They're leaving South Florida, they're downsizing. So my sphere, my clients, a lot of them were the buyers, but I didn't have the relationship. So I realized like we need to build, I'm getting the listings regardless. I need to build a better, just community of a better sphere of people um, that, you know, we can manage, but most it's mostly buyers. Awesome. Jonathan, thank you so much. Even though we had thank a little you for having difficulty, me. you pulled yeah. it out, answered the questions. It was amazing. So Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. You're um, welcome. We your time and thank you everybody for joining and we'll see you next week. Bye. Yeah, and if anybody has any questions, reach out to me on, uh, on Instagram, um, Mr. Underscore J Alexander. I'm an open book, whatever I can do to, to, you know, serve the community here. Um, whatever you need, I got you. Ah, that's amazing. Thank you so much. We'll see you. Right. Bye. See ya.